Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel and thank you all for subscribing to my channel and for liking my videos. Now today I'm going to answer a very specific question on my channel and this question is should you learn Fortran in 2025? Now of course you know that Fortran is a pretty classical language. It's a very dominant language in scientific and engineering computing. But of course there are many new languages out there nowadays such as Python, such as C++, Java, Julia and so on. So what's the point of learning Fortran? I'm going to give you seven reasons in this video today as to why Fortran may be useful for you. So let's begin. Now the number one issue has to do with the STEM disciplines and if you are somebody in the science, technology, engineering and math disciplines then Fortran is a very useful language for you because once you have discretized a problem, you have expressed it in the form of matrices and vectors, that's when Fortran comes in. Because at the end of the day, if you have any system which can be represented as partial differential equations, you have to finally express it in a form which is in a matrix vector equation type of scenario. And as far as Fortran is concerned, it's really very good at matrices, vectors and anything to do with manipulating these particular data structures. So if you are dealing with scientific computing, any kind of strategic sectors, weather forecasting, astrophysics, material science, maybe solving differential equations related to fluid mechanics and so on, such as those which are important for aircraft design, ship design, submarine design, then you are going to need Fortran out there. Now what has happened over the decades is that a lot of codes were developed in Fortran to solve these different equations and these equations have not changed with time because as far as the laws of physics are concerned they have remained same and so the governing equations have also remained same and so the codes which were developed are very good and they work very well in Fortran. So essentially in many of these scientific computing type of scenarios performance is key and so Fortran is going to be very useful for you. Now point number two has to do with high performance computing and if you are somebody who has a computer program which takes a huge amount of time to run then you will find it useful to actually run this program on a supercomputer and whenever you try to do this whether it's a program related to computational fluid dynamics, computational solid dynamics, maybe computational science in general you will find that Fortran is an efficient and direct language and it's very amenable to supercomputing. So in many situations people actually have to put a computationally intensive code into some kind of loop. This may be a Monte Carlo simulation, it may be something to do with robust optimization and so on. And if you are planning to run this on a supercomputer then Fortran is certainly going to be useful to you. In many cases the code which you have may be in Fortran itself. So you may need to do machine learning or deep learning using this code and in this kind of scenario you may be better off just using Fortran and linking it with the Fortran code which is out there. Now the third problem has to do with legacy code maintenance and essentially there is a lot of old code out there in Fortran. This was written for the last many decades and this code has to do deal with solution of many important engineering systems. So if you go to any traditional company out there, you will find that most of the code which they have, which deals with the proprietary knowledge of systems, these are often written in Fortran. And therefore, what is often required is that you need to maintain this code and to port it to the newer systems. So maybe this code was in mainframes, you need to bring it to the modern systems out there, you need to set it up on the cloud. All these things are rather easy to do if you know Fortran very well. Now sometimes there are projects out there to take a code and convert it to some newer programming language, maybe C++, maybe Python, maybe Julia. Then in that case you not only need to know the modern programming language, you also need to know Fortran here. So again this is something which can come in handy. Now the fourth thing is that Fortran is relatively easy to learn and this is because Fortran is a very simple language and it's a very small language. So unlike languages such as C++, Java and so on which are very verbose which have so many features out there you will find that Fortran is very compact and you can learn Fortran in a week certainly in a few weekends so it may be useful to 
learned Fortran and it will be very quick for you. In fact, if you know some programming language such as Python or C or C++ or Java, you can pick up Fortran very quickly. So again, that's something to remember that Fortran is very simple to learn. So you can spend some time learning Fortran and then you can put it on your resume. Now the fifth issue has to do with having a vibrant community. So some people think because Fortran has been out there for many years, there is no support out there for Fortran. There are no compilers out there, but this is not true. There are a lot of people still programming in Fortran. And in fact, there are websites out there such as fortranlang.org. And there are also online compilers on Fortran. For example, if you can check out onecompiler.com. Now there are also compilers in Fortran which have been brought out by different companies. And these are out there for you as well as there are free compilers which have been brought out by people. So again, you can check all these out in Google and find the appropriate compiler for you. Now the sixth point has to do with niche skills and very frequently nowadays if you talk to any person they will probably know Python because Python has become the lingua franca of the programming world. But in many situations if you are applying for a job which requires Python you will see that many people apply so there may be thousands of people applying for any job like that. Same situation is there for languages such as C++ and Java. But if you are somebody who also knows Python or rather I should say knows Fortran, then this is going to certainly benefit your case because people will like the fact that you have an additional niche skill which you bring to the table. Finally, the seventh point has to do with parallel computing and there are many situations where you may need to take a computer program and you may need to parallelize it. So again, in these kind of situations, Fortran has a lot of tools which are very amenable to parallel computing. So all this ties into high performance computing. You can use the code on supercomputers. You can use the code on parallel computers. And there are many problems out there, for example, in weather forecasting, where you may actually need to do a lot of number crunching. And in those situations, Fortran is actually very good for you. So these were some of the points I had for you today. Of course, beside this practical point, there is also the fact that you can think of Fortran like Latin or Greek or Sanskrit or any traditional language out there. And all the modern languages have essentially come out from some language like these. So you can think of the modern languages have also come out from Fortran. So from a purely philosophical point of view, from a point of view of knowledge, it's a good idea to know Fortran. And I have made several videos on Fortran programming. I have made tutorial set on that. I'm going to leave that set in the description box. So make it a point to look at those videos and you can learn Fortran in a few weekends with that particular set.